What's up, guys? And welcome back to another episode of Channel Chasers. We are officially on episode five. So, once again, thank you to everybody watching the video version over on JNB's podcast, Omniverse. And thank you to everybody who is listening on either Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Anchor, or whatever audio platform you are listening to this to. And also thank you to listening to my little Anchor ad that I recorded, because that helps us out a great deal. So, this week... Indeed, thank you all. Yep. So, this week we are talking about a subject near and dear to my co-host heart. So, in this, you know, particular episode, I guess you consider you can consider me the companion. Uh, but, of course, joining me as always is my good friend, co-host, and self-proclaimed sidekick, Brian Kersey. How you doing tonight, Brian? Um, okay. A little under the weather, but I'm pushing through, and it's Doctor Who, so... Woo-hoo. Yep. Um, also, I was like, l- just a little bit of a side note. I was looking at analytics, and it turns out we have a fan over in Russia. So I feel like it'd be racist if I said comrade, but thank you to whoever in Russia is randomly yes. listening to our podcast. Thank you. So, um, as the title implies, and, uh, you know, I don't know if the thumbnail is bigger on, um, like the, you know, audio streaming platforms, but as the title and thumbnail <laughs> imply, we are talking about the brand new Doctor Who New Year's special two-parter that kicked off, I believe it's what, season 13, season 12, something like that? 12. 12, season 12. Okay, so uh, it is called Spyfall, it is a two-parter. Now, Brian, you are much more knowledgeable on Doctor Who, so I will uh, leave it to you, buddy. All right, so, uh, well, first of all, we did, if you listened to last episode, first of all, thank you. Second of all, we had another thing scheduled for this week. Yeah, uh, originally we did plan to do Carolyn Tuesday. I wanted to, you know, mix in a little anime there. But don't worry, we will eventually fit in some anime, and maybe we'll get our uh, good buddy Tony to join in on that one. Um, I'll figure figure out something that's, like, not... Uh, too long that's manageable for Brian to binge. Uh, but, you know, we'll figure that out later. We'll cross that bridge when we get there. But this special was so awesome that I was like, nah, man, I love Carolyn Tuesday. You love Carolyn Tuesday. But my God, this needs to be talked about like ASAP. In Indeed. And usually with our podcasts we like to go into like the history of the show but i feel like with doctor who that's like 60 have, years 60 plus years now yeah you have to make you have to make a cut off so i will just i will just start by uh just talking about the like jody whitaker run the yeah yeah well, the chris chebnall era mm-hmm. era because um, Moffat officially left when when Capaldi left. Yep. And so people are like, okay, what's going to come next? What's going to be next? And uh, first of all, they, they announced Chris Chibnall, which if you guys don't know, he actually did work on Doctor Who before. So people are like, okay, well... He's done some good episodes, and he's done some not-so-great episodes, but let's see how he is as a showrunner. And then they announced, oh, female doctor. And not just a female doctor. A female doctor played by Jodie Whittaker from Attack the Block fame. And if you have not seen Attack the Block, what are you doing? You should go see Attack the Block. It's Jodie Whittaker or... and John Boyega fighting aliens. Yep, indeed. It is Ray, sorry, Finn and the Doctor fighting aliens in the urban streets of the UK. It's pretty fucking awesome. It's one of my favorite movies. Yes, indeed. And um, she's also known for Broadchurch. Yeah, yeah, that that was a huge one too. I forgot to mention Broadchurch. Yep. That's actually also a really good show. I'm a big fan of British TV, if you guys can't already tell. 
and so am I. But um, but yeah, so they announced that. Uh, then people were like, okay, so what's the companions gonna be like? And then they announced, oh boy, three companions. Yeah, it's been a while since that's happened. Yeah, the only time that the I think the last time that that like fully happened where the doctor had three people that they were traveling with was when they was when we had the doctor family of the ponds and river. Yep. But and that was only for a short period of time. The ponds were the real companions, yeah. not river. Mm -hmm. I think it's been like since classic who since the doctor has had like a group this big that stays for an extended period amount of time. Yeah. And I think, you know, uh, you know, just kind of going into it uh, as someone who isn't super familiar with classic who, and I jumped on during the uh, like the Eccleston years, uh, you know, with new who like the Moffat era. Um, I, I enjoy Doctor Who a lot. I really enjoy the lore and just, you know, time travel is one of those things where I either like say, no, fuck it. It makes my head hurt or like, oh, this is really fun. Like a legend tomorrow or say a Doctor Who. Doctor Who definitely lands in the fun, you know, category. And also it helps me learn like real, really interesting fun facts about history. And I really do like history. So like that's also a plus. Yeah. And, um, then we, and then, uh, we went along and we had the first episode with Joey and it was really good. It, it was, and, um, it was a bit tragic. Yeah. And it was, it was kind of obvious though, because it's like. They know it's three companions, but she has four yeah, companions. Yeah, I, I, I was like, that, yeah, one of these things is not like the other, and oh, oh, okay. So this is how their motivation's going to go to, like, join the Doctor and stuff. Interesting. And it was a great episode. It was a great start. Uh, but, you know, if we're being honest here, uh, yeah, I was not the, the biggest season. fan of the season as a whole. Um Honestly, honestly, I love the character, the character of Jody's doctor and the companions. I love all four. I completely agree. Yeah, but but last season as a whole was probably the weakest of New Who. Yeah, because like okay, so one of my I have a couple issues that I had with last season. So issue number one, uh, there was no real. Aside from, like, the first episode and, like, the last episode, and maybe a couple mm -hmm. in between, there were no real stakes in a lot of the conflicts that they faced. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, there was no real enemy. It was either a misunderstanding or the bad guy was technology. Yeah, um, they definitely, yeah, Chibnall, even the showrunner, even said in interviews that he was trying to stay away from classic stuff and hone his new, his own path, which I understand yeah, that's, that that's, mentality. Yeah, that's but... definitely admirable. You know, you want to make your own mark. I get that, for sure. But this is Doctor Who. You gotta at least acknowledge it. And, like, you know what the people came here to see, man. Like, mm -hmm. I'm not saying you should always just give in to your fans, but, like, your fans are fans for a reason. Mm hmm You know? And another thing that got people was the fact that there was no, like, the Doctor was the only, like, returning alien in the whole season. Yeah, for sure. There were no, like, Daleks. Until, like, um, towards the Cybermen. end. Cybermen. Toward, towards the end, we got Cyber a little bit of it. I'm talking about that season as a whole. Well, I'm ta I'm, ta I'm talking I'm talking about towards the end of that season. Like we got a little bit of it towards the end. Like hints, but again, yeah, you're right. Like no full appearances. And it was and so people were starting to get a little bit worried, but then they announced that um they weren't going to do a Christmas special and people were worried about that. But then they came out with the New Year's special, which oh boy. 
Oh my god, like holy shit, man. It's you know, one thing that I love about TV and, you know, just media in general is like let's take for example, let's jump from TV to movies real quick. Let's look at the example of Sonic the Hedgehog, right? So, we saw we all saw that trailer. It was an abomination. The entire internet said pass. And then like the crew listened and was like, hey, our bad. Let's take a year, fix, or at least a few months, fix this up, make it real Sonic, hire an actual Sonic fan artist, redesign it, and then redo the trailer and the movie. New trailer comes out, holy shit, that's actually Sonic. The, the reason I went on that tangent, that feels like the process that Chim Nolan Company kind of went through with current season of Doctor Who, at least judging by yeah. the New Year's special. Yeah, last the the New Year's special, the first ever New Year's special. Yep. And they even brought in a Dalek, but they did their own unique thing and even added to like the lore of Daleks and they managed to have their cake and eat it too. They used classic but introduce their own stuff yep and this episode you know we'll get into it more as we you know get further along but this episode also just opened up the door for new layers of lore which i am all about which speaking of without further ado uh we'll we'll get to the fact that um they then had a year-long break with no Doctor Who in 2019 beyond the New Year special. And then it was announced that not only was this year going to have a New Year special, but then it was announced that this New Year special would actually technically be the premiere of the new season. And that they were starting with a two-parter, which Chibnall has never done before. And you know shit gets real when... Doctor Who does multi-part episodes. I will admit that it, that especially in like, I think it was like Capaldi's run, they overused the two-parters at some point. They definitely overused the two-parters in Capaldi's run. I feel that for sure. Like, it kind of lost the specialness. But not for this one. And this one, the name of the episode is called Spyfall. And so, uh, let's actually start talking about the episode itself. So yeah. Spoiler alert. Yeah, this is, our, this is your official spoiler warning. If you have not seen the Doctor Who New Year special, definitely check it out if you are a Doctor Who fan. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Would you say that this is a, like, a decent jumping on point? I would say no. I would say you'd have to probably have had watched the uh, at least this prior season to uh, really get into yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, I... I'd say that. I'd say that um, Joey's first episode is a good jumping on point. It's just, it's kind of... This is going to sound weird, but I know Jay will know exactly what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. This is kind of like Legends, where it's not the best when it begins, but you need to stick with it. I definitely agree. I I, I def I think for sure like this has the same kind of vibe as like th- this the first Jody's first season is definitely like same kind of vibe as Legend season one. Yeah, because like, still trying to figure out what it is. Like they need to know, really don't really know what to do yet. But they have a lot of great characters to work with. So like, you know, it's, uh, eventually they'll get there. And they do with this one, Spyfall, where. Right off the bat, you can tell that this is going to be a spy-themed episode. Yep. Especially with the title and all that. Uh, one of the controversial things that Chibnall did that people hate is the fact that he got rid of Unit. Yep. So, and people are hit. People think that this. The way that they talked about it, that they might be hinting at bringing back Unit or Torchwood. Oh, man, if they bring back Torchwood. Well, at least the organization, maybe not the show. Well, I mean, I know they wouldn't bring back the show. Everybody, 
on that cast is pretty busy at the moment. Yep. Um, but, but yeah, uh, So the episode begins with the doctor and crew being taken in by secret people, and you're like, "Who is this?" Yeah, we okay, know what's not you? Yeah, yeah, what the fuck's going on? And then it turns out to be actual MI6. So we're going like full on James Bond style, and I'm like, "Okay, this is more actiony than I'm used to with this crew." All right, especially with the fact going. that the head of MI6 is none other than Stephen Fry. That was pretty awesome. And I mean, like, you know, again, one of the complaints I had, like, about the prior season was that there were no stakes. But, like, right off the bat, like, within, like, the first 10, 15 minutes of the episode, people are dying, like, left and right, including, like, the people that drove them to the MI6 base and the head of Mm -hmm. MI6. Like, I was like, holy shit, they are really not fucking around this time. Okay, I see you, Chimnal. All right. I mean, I mentioned Stephen Fry, but like five minutes in, Stephen Fry's dead. Yep. It's just like, well, shit. Okay, this is where we're going. I'm into this. Let's see where it goes. And it keep, it keeps going. So we it get... keeps going. Oh yeah, my bad. I was just gonna say, and it keeps going, the action and all that, because the doctor and crew are like, okay, MI6 only gave us this little bit of information, so we need to go off. So and then they're like, okay. yeah. So we're gonna split up into two teams, and so we got the doctor and Graham going to find one of the doctor's like old friends from MI6 named O. And then you got uh, Ryan and Yaz, which is one of my favorite, like, team-up pairings. Um, actually, like, both team-up pairings are great because the Doctor and Graham have a really funny back and forth all the time. And, like, mm-hmm. and like Yaz and Ryan complement each other really well, like, in terms of personalities. Indeed, because he's more, he's more timid, uh, goofy kind of character... Which, by the way, um, just quick side note. I love that they've introduced that Ryan has dyspraxia and they actually like play with it and don't forget about it. Yep. Because um, for fun fact, people, I have it too. Yeah, so, so that's cool. Um, so basically, uh, what Ryan and Yaz are doing are uh, they're like investigating this tech billionaire named uh barton who is basically like black evil mark zuckerberg Mm -hmm. and 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 they're going like they aren't even trying to hide it they're going like full on lois lane and jimmy olsen yep it's it's pretty fun they're reporters and he's a photographer but she she's like real focused on the truth and he's bumbling and a little scared. <laughs> Which is really funny because like Ryan plays a more accurate Jimmy than Makab Brooks has on Supergirl. No offense to Makab Brooks. I love James. I think he's a great character, but James is not Jimmy. I mean I, I realize that that was probably the point, but like, you know, whatever. Yeah. But even da- and I love how Ryan is so bumbling down to the faint fact that his that his name is Logan Jackman. Yeah, he he actually freaks out before they go in because he's like, "I don't look like Hugh Jackman." <laughs> I love, yeah, and like yes, yeah, of course, you know she's a police officer, so she's not necessarily used to the spy stuff, but she's used to like investigating, so she can she has a pretty good handle on things. Mm-hmm. And so they discover like this like um, in this information on Barton, and uh, like when Yaz uses one of the doctor's gadgets to hack into his like info, it turns out 
that his DNA is only 97% human. So it's like, wait, what the hell is going on here? What's up with him? And so we cut back to like the doctor and Graham. They run into O, who is played by the same actor who played Davos in Iron Fist. Fun fact for those and who fun. might be original uh, Channel Chasers fans from the YouTube days, uh, Iron Fist was actually one of our lost episodes. And like we spent a whole 30 minutes just bitching about that show. And you know Davos was on the list of things we bitched about. Uh, and then we realized we had stopped recording. And it was just like, well, we're not doing that again. So uh, forget it. Indeed. Also, fun fact. For you guys, uh, the doctor and um, Davos's character O have, keep talking about how they've met before, and um, it's actually funny that they say that because the actor was the director in Adventure in Space and Time, the like doctor who like, mockumentary thing that they did. Yep. So. So that was fun. Um, and, like, the Doctor and Graham are mainly investigating, like, what kind of alien interference this is. Because, like, the uh, head of MI6 basically showed them that um, the victims, the, the spies that have been, like, taken down aren't just put into a coma, their DNA has been completely rewritten to the fact where they are no longer human, they're kind of just beings in a human-like shell. Mm-hmm. Which is pretty freaking nuts. And so, like, the Doctor and Graham try and investigate, they try and investigate, and then eventually, one of them shows up. Now, also, these light beings, the Kasavin. We, we later find out they're called the Kasabin, uh, show up at Barton's office. And Yaz and Ryan are right there. So they're like, oh, shit. And so they're trying to, like, you know, stay quiet, stay hidden. And But unfortunately, you know, after all that happens, Yaz ends up getting captured and sent to the Kasabin's home dimension. But then, yes. luckily, she gets sent back, and she gets sent into uh, this contraption that O made that the doctor helped rig up to try and capture one of the Kasabin. Um, so this is pretty interesting because, like, you know, Brian, um, our friend Mimi, and myself, you know, we have a group chat, like we've mentioned several times in these past few episodes, and that we talk, you know, we talk to each other while watching, like, the shows that we all watch together. And Doctor Who is one that me, 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 and Brian watch yeah, at the same time. And, um, you know, the whole time we were all like, okay, that's definitely not Yaz. Yaz got replaced. What's going to go down? It's going to be like the classic spy film Double Cross. Like, oh, man, I, I hope they get Yaz back. We were so distracted by that that we did because, not. Um, yeah. oh, but yeah. before we get to the. Before we get to that, though, we should probably mention how they go, like, they've been hinting at, like, spy stuff and all that, but they go full-on James Bond when they go to the dude's birthday party, and things go awry, so they have to go full-on James Bond, yep. where it's a motorcycle car chase. Which was epic! The doctor and companions on motorcycles chasing after Barton's car. Yes, um, the doctor had her own motorcycle. <laughs> Graham was driving one with Brian sitting in the back. And then, and then Yaz was, of course, driving one with O holding on to her. Yep. And then they see Barton getting on this plane. They're like, he can't get away. We don't want him to get away. So they run on there and, uh, the doctor notices something. Oh, her friend. He was a champion sprinter. But running to the plane, he had a very hard time. Yep. 
to where they had to legit pull him in. Mm-hmm. They, like, cause it was it was almost like a Mission Impossible type thing, you know, where like Tom Cruise is like running beside the plane, mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, but this time instead of Tom Cruise, it was just it was just a regular person. So he was just like out of breath, like oh, I can't do this, I can't do this. And the doctor's like, wait a minute, you can't do this? And he's like, yeah, I was always last in school. And she's like, I read your record. You were a champion sprinter. What the hell? And so this is when the big shoe drops, guys. So Because up until this point, it had been like, okay, this this is still one of their best, but it's still kind of... That, that, yeah, special. they're lacking in a villain. I mean, yeah, Barton, I guess, is is the villain, but he's kind of lackluster. Um, and then, uh, you know, the one the one thing that like O said before was like, you know, we have to find the spy master. And then he brings it up again. He goes, "I told you before, Doctor, you have to focus on you know the bigger picture and find the spy master, or maybe." And while while he's saying this. She's being like, what? What? Yeah, things are starting to click in her head. She goes, no way. It can't be. Or and maybe like, just, oh. or maybe just and she's, the and master. she's like, oh. <laughs> yep. And, it's just and like, she's like, oh my god. That's why I chose it. Yep. Oh my god. The fucking master is back. Whoa! Yep. Holy shit, man. I mean, I absolutely loved Missy. She's probably my favorite element of Capaldi's run. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, Michelle Gomez, she's great, but, you know, she's busy on Sabrina doing great things over there as Madam Satan. So. Indeed. You know, of course, she's not going to be back, and I, you know, as fun as it would be to see Missy and the Doctor go at it, I think this is just as good, maybe even better. Because, like, the last time with Missy and Capaldi's Doctor, it was kind of like a yandere, jealous ex-girlfriend type of banter and relationship. She was kind of like the anti-River. Mm-hmm. Uh, but this time, like, the Master you know, has gone, like, full-on chaotic good to borrow, like, a... No, not chaotic good, chaotic evil to borrow a D&D alignment term. He just wants to see the fucking yes. world burn. And, oh, yes, man. It, it, and the minute that, the minute that the, like, doctor figures it out and he says it, he turns a dime and goes from, like, this timid like, maybe possible fourth companion type character to being, like, a mi- somehow a master who is like a mix of Missy, John Sims master, the, the one right before Missy, yep. and even a little of Matt Smith's doctor. I definitely see the Matt Smith in there, yeah, for sure. Uh, and And I love it where he's just, like, reveling in it, and he's like uncontrollably clapping. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, his personality. Because like you, with how big of a personality Jody has, you need an equally big personality to match her. And you know, I'm not gonna lie. If you had told me ju- <laughs> just on paper that the actor who played Davos was gonna be the master, I would have been like. Eh! really know that dude doesn't really have that much range from what i saw boy was i wrong indeed because um in iron fist he's just like i wanted it it's mine yeah, that ball's mine he was just whining and just complaining all the time and you know i, I blame scott buck to be honest um, but like this man, this is a whole nother level. Like he legit sends the doctor on like a her own like century spanning side adventure, and because he sends because the companions, what I... uh, he sends the companions barreling to their deaths. Like 
Because Shit. what happens is, of course, if that... It's kind of like, to borrow another thing, Crisis. Crisis on Infinite Earths, the first chunk of episodes. That it, that ended, and we had a point where we were like, oh, shit, how the hell are they going to get out of this? And then they were like, nope, it's even worse. Yep. And then here, they also did that with the fact that there's a plane, and there's a bomb in the cockpit. And, yep. and... This actually goes back to, like, old Doctor Who stuff. Not only has he made the bomb sonic-proof, but there was a previous case where the Master had the Doctor trapped on on a plane, and it was about to be destroyed, but there was a parachute. So, oh, so Master openly admits now that he took all the parachutes out. Yep. He's like, I thought I thought I had this time, and it's just like, oh snap, nice. And so, and so the the light creatures come in, and yep, Jody's out of there, and the companions are hailing, are falling towards the earth in a in a plane with no cockpit. And they're just like, oh shit, what do we gotta do? But And boom, that's when part one ends. Yep. So we were like Whoa! Oh, how the fuck? Like what is gonna happen? Wow, that was a good episode. What a way to kick off the season. Damn. But if that wasn't enough, then part two comes around. Yeah, so in part two, you know, the companions are plummeting. And so they're all freaking out, understandably. But then Ryan sees instructions on the floor, like with an arrow pointing to like a certain like thing. And then he sees uh, like a seat number. He goes to that seat number. He, he finds a set of instructions that tells him to basically like plug in his phone here. And so he because it, it looks like the normal emergency, but. It, the people are replaced by little cartoons of the Doctor and Ryan. Yep. And so Ryan plugs in his phone, and then on the in-flight movie screen pops up the Doctor. And so she was like, hey guys, so I see you're probably falling to your deaths right now, and I love Graham. Graham is like, Doc, where are you? What the hell's going on? Who was that guy? Please give us some kind of explanation. And then she goes, Graham, I know you're probably yelling at the screen right now, but I can't hear you. This is a recording. Please stop yelling at the screen. I'm not yelling! Yes, you are. And like I said, don't talk back to the screen. It is a recording. And so, like, she gives the instructions, and so they're able to basically, you know, fix the plane so that it stops from crashing, and that autopilot will take them to the destination where they need and to that, go. And I love that. And I love that from Ryan. He's like, Woo! Can't ride a bike, but I can fly a plane! <laughs> yeah, that was awesome. Nice callback to the first episode of, uh, you know, this uh, last season. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Uh, um, so, now, let's go to the big adventure with the Doctor, then we'll come back to the Companions. So, the Doctor is trapped in the Kasabin's dimension where, you know, Yaz was for a bit. And, you know, she explores around, she starts talking, and eventually she sees this one chick that looks like she's from the Victorian era. And, you know, she basically explains, yeah, I I've been here a couple times, you know, I, I, I don't know what to do, though. And so, like, the Doctor uses this girl to kind of, like, tether herself, and they manage to get back to her time. We discover... That this girl is not just some girl. She happens to be Ada Lovelace. Which, you know, for those of you guys who don't know, because I didn't know this until the episode and I did some Googling, um, Ada Lovelace is actually, like, the great-grandmother of the modern computer. Uh, she was one of the people that kind of helped, you know, build the foundation of what would eventually become the modern computer. So that's pretty awesome. Yep. And she's, like, this mathematician. And, and spy. And she's just this really smart 
like really smart person. Yep. From history. And I love it because the doctor just keeps calling her Ava. And then at the end, she sees her male friend and she no figures out his name. She's like, wait, does that mean that you're lovely? And then she gives her maiden name. Yep. And I love it. The doctor's like, and you know, like, you, you never know. You might look out for a duke. You might need, you might meet a nice lord. You, know, you never know. Yeah. And uh, so basically, they end up going on a crazy adventure that eventually leads them to France. Now, I know what you're thinking. You know, they're already in the UK. France isn't that big of a jump. You know, and Victorian era France, that's pretty, that's pretty tame. Nothing big's happening there. Well, no, it is not Victorian era France. It is France in the year 1945. That's right. The climax of World War II. What? Indeed. What? Are you kidding? Mm -hmm. This is wild. And then, like, not only that, like, the master obviously follows them. And he, of course, is in a Nazi uniform because, of fucking course, he's the master. Um, and basically, yeah, she, you know, the doctor <laughs> uses this handy trick with Morse code after they run into their second, you know, it, uh, time traveling adventure companion. Um, I honestly forget her name as well. Um, uh, but she was the. Uh, but I actually knew her because I, I studied her in high school. I, I, I actually think I did a report on her. She's, <coughs> my bad. She was the uh, first British officer, uh, radio officer, to be sent behind enemy lines. And not just that, the first woman sent behind enemy lines, and she was a pacifist, so she never carried a sidearm or a cyanide capsule. So, yeah. she, she's a badass. Um, and what I like about this is, like, yeah, you know, we got, like, two powerful women from history, uh, but it's not just, like, some kind of, like, ham-fisted, like, girl power message, like we have gotten a couple times in the previous season. Not gonna lie. Um, this was actually like integral to the story, and they actually played a super vital part in you know the, helping the doctor on her adventure. Yeah, and and um, they several times did unexpected things, like um, like Ava was not supposed to come with her to France, but Ada at the last minute was like, "Fuck it." Or actually, they weren't supposed to go to France in the first place. But yeah, uh, yeah. When Ava grabbed her hand, or Ada grabbed her hand at the last second, it threw off the calculations slightly, and so they ended up in 1945. Yeah, and then they actually take a moment with these, with these, uh, spoiler one time only characters, where they have a moment where it's just the two of them, and it's like. Uh, why are we doing this? And it's like, do, do you understand what's going on? Because I don't understand what's going on. It's like, nope, but I just follow what she does because, you know, it, it seems to work. And she's, she's like one of the most confident, smartest women I've ever met. And she knows what she's doing. So I just go along with it. Okay. Yep. I feel like that's like the companion, like, mantra, right? Like... They seem to know what they're doing. I'm going to follow the doctor. Yeah. And I love it, though, because the, the actress who play Ada and the other chick are so good. And a couple times there, they just have moments where they just, like, share a look at each other like, you know what's going on? No. Nope. Do you? Nope. But this <laughs> is pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, so eventually they end up making it back in time uh, to uh, present day. But then, like, she realized, the doctor realizes, oh, shit, um, my companions are falling to their deaths uh, in present day. So, uh, let me, get, get, <coughs> give me a second. Let me get my TARDIS back. Okay, got the TARDIS back. Um, 
Thank you, ladies. I appreciate your help. But uh, I'm going to have to mind wipe you real quick because uh, you've learned a little too much. Yeah, which um, give me uh, feelings of uh, back to, like, Donna. Yep. Which, by the way, we touched on it with the... But there were a lot of callbacks in this two-parter, especially the second episode. There were a lot. Like, we called back to the drums with the master. Yep. With the Morse code. Yep. We called back to... We called back to the whole um, blink with the message. Mm -hmm. We we called back to even classic who, which I don't know if you know about this. Probably not. The whole shrinking thing with the master. Mm -hmm. That's an old classic trick that the master used to do. Oh, okay, interesting. And also, the master, especially I think the Robert Delgado version, that's the name of the act, one of the actors, uh, was a master of disguise and would hide in plain sight. Okay, cool. Sometimes for like a whole like episode, because back then the episodes were like four or five parters. And for like one whole part, the master would be in plain sight. Just, just. And then he'd do the whole Scooby-Doo, take off the mask thing, and you'd be like, oh, it's the master. Nice. And so they kind of called that back, too, by the fact of the master taking the face of O. Yep. And that was all really cool. Also, um, it might have seemed like it came out of nowhere, but the fact that the master and the doctor... Have a telepathic conversation. That's classic Who too. Interesting. But also in the way that Chibnall does things. It's a nod to classic. But with his own twist. Because before in classic Who. It was only used for the doctor. To communicate with his previous incarnations. Hmm. Like. Especially in a special called The Five Doctors, where it featured, where it semi-featured all five Doctors. One made a cameo, and another made a cameo played by a different actor. Okay, interesting. But, um, but yeah, in that special, they talk to each other psychically with the whole contact thing. That's pretty cool. And... And so there were a lot of classic callbacks. Also, the fact that the master had TARDIS. We never really talked about that yet. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. That that was a huge one. It's like, how the hell did the master get Yeah, like, where'd you, where'd you get that? But then we find out where he got it from because it turns out, well, I mean, we don't, it's not fully confirmed, but it's heavily implied because the master says to the doctor, he went back to Gallifrey and he discovered that, you know, Gallifrey was destroyed. Um, and apparently that everything that he and the doctor have come to know has turned out to be a lie. Yeah, well, at first he says that he went back when he's dressed as a Nazi, which even for the master, that's kind of a new low. <laughs> right, but when he's dressed as a Nazi, he hints saying that Gallifrey was destroyed, and so after the Doctor wins, because of course the Doctor wins, this is Doctor Who. Um, she decides to hey, I'll humor him and go back to and go to Gallifrey to see for myself, and expert acting from Jody here. Yeah, man. Wow, like the facial acting was so on point. We don't even, at first, we don't see it. We just see the look of yeah. devastation in her face. Mm -hmm. And it lingers, and and everyone's like, what? What is she looking at? 
And then they, you look at Gallifrey and it's completely destroyed. And it's like burnt to a cinder. It's just like, holy shit, man. And then and then it's now that she gets a she gets a hologram message from the master being like, Yeah, I said someone burned Gallifrey. It was me. Yep. And I did it because they lied to us. Everything They lied we... to all of us. Yep. Everything we learned, everything we come to know, our entire background, you know, what we you know who we are as people was a lie. And and it's in all of our history, even yours, you know it, the timeless child. Mm. And you're like, oh, they actually brought back one of the plot holes from last season. Right? Uh, they even flash it to remind people about when that happened. That was because br- when that ha- when that happened last season with the timeless child, people were like, "Okay, are they talking about the doctor's daughter?" Yeah, is it is it like is it a Jenny thing, or are they talking about like Arya's character? Or classic fans, are they talking about his granddaughter? Yep, his his canonical first ever companion. Because when Doctor Who starts, it's just him and his granddaughter traveling. But then his granddaughter wants to actually go to school, so he takes her to Earth. And two of her teachers stumble upon the TARDIS. And that's how Doctor Who the show starts. Yep. With the four of them traveling. Because fun fact for, for those of you who might not know, Doctor Who... Started off as an educational show. Yeah, which is why it has all like the historical fun fact stuff. Yeah, down to the fact of in the old school days, the first Doctor, it was it was clockwork. One adventure, they'd go to the past, and the daughter's history teacher would take over and teach a lesson, and then the next story, they'd go to the future where the science teacher would teach a science lesson. Yep. That's I, I do know about that. That's pretty, that, and that's a pretty fun format. Yeah, but as they say, the rest is history. Uh, when actors wanted to leave, and then the the actor who played the doctor unfortunately had to leave through a doctor's note. Like legit, the actor was was like the character, and he was very stubborn. And the doctor had to legit write him a doctor's note saying, he can no longer act. He's too old. Dang. And so so that's when they came up with the whole regeneration thing to keep the story going. But anyway, speaking about companions, though, we never really picked up what happened. Oh, yeah, 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 right. My bad. Okay. So, Yaz, Graham, and Ryan, they, they go after Barton. And Barton has gone, like, full-on evil Zuckerberg. So, you guys know how, like, everybody's fear with Facebook is that they're just going to take our information and they're going to watch us through all our cameras and electronics and different things like that. Well, that's what happens. And not only that, they use cell phones as a device to rewrite DNA. That's right. The very thing I am recording this podcast on could have been used to rewrite my DNA. Yeah, and it's cool, though, because the companions and all are like, the doctor's gone. We just plummet. We just survived being plummeted towards the earth. We're on the run. What the hell are we going to do? And then they look at each other. They crack a couple jokes. And they're like, we'll do what the doctor wanted us to do. We'll fight. Yep. And so they do. They manage to, you know, stop Barton and his whole DNA thing. And uh, that's when the doctor comes back. And, you know, the Trump return and all that stuff. Um, And, you know, once the day is saved and everything is cleared up. Yeah, this is like, okay, so... You know, we've been traveling with you for a while now, but we realize you know everything about us, and we know nothing about you. 
So, uh... Yeah, yeah, because during their, like, conversation with each other, they realize they know nothing. Like, as far as companions go, they have been, like, the least informed. Yeah, like, they barely even know about the whole, like, regenerations thing. Because, like, Graham's like, oh, yeah, I do remember, like, when we first met her, like, Grace and I, at least. She uh she told me and Grace that you know she used to be a man through a thing called regeneration. And I thought she was joking, but then O mentioned it. So I think it's real. Yeah. Um and... I, I, I like I like this though. I like that they're so like not informed because like I feel like there are a lot of people that probably have jumped on to this era since it's a new showrunner. Um, mm-hmm. So um, it allows new fans to really start learning things along with the companions. Yeah. And I mean, they, and... I mean, they kind of did the same thing with Rose when, you know, Eccleston's era started. Yeah. But, but early on for Rose, they came clean with the fact that he was an alien, that he had two hearts. Yeah, true. They even did that cool thing that they haven't done since where uh, where he's like, yeah, I constantly always feel the world turning, but you just don't because you're so used to it. And she's like, what? And he takes, he takes her hand and she starts to feel the world move. Yeah, that's pretty cool. That was a cool moment of back mm. then. But But yeah, like overall it ended really well, you know, uh, you know, basically she gives them a, a quick little crash course on who she is and what she is. Just kind just yeah. kind of like the bullet points version. And there's even like a gut wrenching moment where yes, it's like, "Okay, can you take us to your home planet then?" Yep, and she's like, "Um, about that." Uh, nah. Maybe later. Yeah. That was real sad. Uh, but overall, once again, fantastic two-parter. Uh, this a- showed a lot of promise for Chimnal season. So much so that yeah. both Brian and I have decided to alter our review schedules. Uh, we might have, we, both of us are like, we might have to skip Batwoman and record Batwoman later. Because, shoot, man, like, Doctor Who is just on a roll right now. Yep. Also, um, we didn't get to mention it, but but um, one of the things that especially classic Who fans have been complaining about is the Doctor has a dark side. You see this like when Matt Smith's doctor got angry. Uh, Tenet, Tenet's it doctor happened got with angry. Tenet a lot. Tenet definitely had like a, a much. Capaldi. Yep, Capaldi's was kind of was the scariest. If I'm being honest, like cause... he got the scariest, but then Claire and Bill helped bring him back. Yep. Some. But, but yeah, and Jody, all of season twelve, Jody never got angry. Or season eleven. It, this is 12, right? Or am I counting wrong? Oh, yeah, you're right. In 11. Sorry, my bad. In se- season 11, Jody never really got angry. Yeah, but also but, there was like, there were, again, that it also has to do with like the fact that there were very little conflicts and she didn't really have a good antagonist. I know, but my point was definitely at the fact where the master tells her everything. Well, mostly everything in the hologram. You see it. She gets pissed. Yeah, man. She throws. She throws her screwdriver. And she gets real pissed. That was fucking awesome. Once again, great acting from Jody. Exactly. Because even, even like the biggest naysayers are like, Jody Whitaker's such a good actress. Why aren't you using her? That's what I'm saying. That's what I said the whole time with season 11. Like, she's so great. But, like, they're really underplaying her. 
which is something that that's never happened before. Like in Moffat's era, like my biggest complaint with Moffat is that he underplayed the companions to make the do- make the Doctor look better half the time. You know what I'm saying? Like obviously there were key eras where like the the companions were super important, and I feel like they made Clara a little too important. But you know, it's another conversation for another time. But yeah, but yeah, you know, um, like Jody kind of had the opposite problem, but it looks like they're fixing it, which is why I'm like, okay, I am definitely on board with this season now. Like I was excited for it before, but now I'm like legit anticipating episodes every week, which hasn't happened in a couple years for Doctor Who for me. Yeah, and if you see the trailer for, like, this whole season. Yep. They aren't holding punches. Nope. Not at all. Cybermen are going to be in this. That's probably what got me the most hype, because Cybermen are one of my favorite, like, recurring villains. But they're going to have a high bar to live up to, because... That last adventure with Capaldi Oh, yeah, Capaldi's Capaldi Cyberman. Cyberman episode was so good. Oh, my God, that was one of my favorites. The Cybermen killed Capaldi. Yeah, man, that was wild. And that whole Bill Cyberman thing. That was that so was... sad. Oh, my God, man. Oh, that I that that's actually one of the few episodes from I mean not to say Capaldi's era was bad but that's one of the episodes from Capaldi's era that I've seen like several times. But yeah, we're also getting the Centaurans back. Oh yeah, that's gonna be cool. And several classic Who people. So it, it that's gonna be cool and interesting to see. And I guess now we can move on to speculation. Okay, I mean, honestly, I don't really have as much because I'm not as like super familiar. But I just want I just want more of the master and seeing like what role he has to play in this, and what exactly the lie Gallifrey told, you know, the that's, doctor. That's and the what masters. I'm thinking about. That's the main thing for speculation is uh, what is the lie. Mm-hmm. Because I've actually gone through and I, and I paused it. Um, when she has that flash in her head, mm-hmm. you see you see a clip from like I think it was episode two of last season, but then you see this like quick image of this little boy standing in front of these like two towers and there's a purple background. Oh shit! And there's a voice in the background that almost sounds like a Dalek. Oh, wow. Man, that's really interesting. Yeah, so that's going to be really cool to see. Uh, but first, before we get to all that, um, we're going to have to deal with the like spa planet from hell. Oh, yeah. That, look, that honestly looks like a lot of fun. Um, I, I'm, I'm glad we're kind of like, you know, going... A little more lighthearted, it seems, because like we need a little bit of a break after all that craziness. But it's still gonna have some horror elements. I mean, it definitely. Yeah, Chim- Chimnall is actually pretty good at like the horror stuff from what we saw in last season. <laughs> well, I mean, his most memorable villain from last season, legit as trophies would glue teeth to his face. Yep. Also, let's not forget the spider episode, which, you know, for every Doctor Who fan with arachnophobia, self-included, was like nightmare fuel for a couple days. Yeah, indeed. So, yeah, it'll be real interesting. So, yeah, um, in short, we both love the episode and cannot wait for the rest of the season, and we can't wait to do a follow-up when the season wraps up. Hopefully, hopefully this energy continues and, you know, Doctor Who proves to, like, knock it out of the park. Yeah, because 
I love Doctor Who and I wish it all the best. Um I I am honestly if you guys know it, we've hinted at it kind of in our first five episodes but also it's more prevalent in the old shows that are no longer available. I am the optimist of the group so I always look on like to say quote the life of Brian always look on the bright side of life do 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 uh but uh which that just hit me life of Brian yep <laughs> but um but yeah so but I will openly admit when when Doctor Who is not It's like one of my favorite shows, but I will openly admit when it's not doing well. And last season was not that great. Granted, it wasn't Love and Monsters bad. Yep. Nothing against Love and Monsters. Love and Monsters bad. With the Absorba Law. But like, Ugh. it was like, it was just. Not not necessarily bad, I would even say. I feel like it was just kind of aggressively lackluster. Yeah. Like, when I say that it's the... It's probably the, like, weakest, like, season of Modern Who. That's just because Modern Who has been pretty pretty fire. Like... Yeah. Indeed. And, and this is just coming from somebody who jumped on in 09 with Modern Who. And, like, I don't have as much of an attachment as Brian does, but I definitely love the franchise. Um, I still have yet to own a Sonic. My, a friend of mine, Corey, bought me one and just lost it. I did have a Sonic screwdriver spoon, but eventually that spoon broke. Uh, but, you know, that, that, again, that's just a side story. But anyway, we've gone on for about an hour. That's usually about our time limit. So now uh, that we've, you know, talked this amazing special to death, it is time for that special time of night. And this time we'll have actual shows because it is plug time, ladies and gentlemen. That time of the night where we talk about what is coming up for our channels. For me, it's Vlair. For Brian, it's YouTube. Links to both will be in the description down below of the podcast. All right. So for me, of course, uh, first up is, of course, the show that we were just talking about. Doctor Who. Uh, Tomorrow, as a recording, which would probably be today when this goes up, or yeah, it, it de it's definitely going to be. Well, I mean, yeah, it's going to be today because uh, th this goes up on. We record these on Saturdays, you know, peek behind the curtain. We record these on Saturday nights, and these usually go up around Sunday, um, Sunday afternoon, if not, and uh, if uh, if I'm not busy, some maybe maybe when things get more hectic, they'll go up on Mondays. But as of right now, they go up on Sundays. And then the video version goes up on Sunday as well. Uh, once we get the audio together. That's a little peek behind the curtain. But, but yeah. So that's on Sunday the 12th. Then of course. Uh, Tuesday. A little something. You may have heard of it. You know small little indie TV. You know. Little, little, little tiny, little tiny project. Uh, it's, it's called um, uh, what is it? Damn, crisis, midlife crisis, uh, crisis on infinite earths. There we go. Yeah, part four, which is man, ah, uh, this. You know, some of our friends on some of our friends have been talking about how like the the crossover was a letdown, and that you know. Uh, we got a couple comments on the YouTube version that we uh, like that we were caught up in the hype and aren't seeing things clearly. You know, you got to entitled to your own opinions, but man, this crossover has been a blast. Mm-hmm. So indeed. So yeah. Also. Also, uh, when we do come back. How, how, 
how are they gonna do this? I honestly like, don't know. I, I, I I've been trying I've been racking my brain the entire break and I can't figure anything out. Cause it's now seven seven heroes. Six six technically. I I I got the number wrong. I thought it was eight fillers, my bad. Uh six heroes. One evil SOB versus an even more powerful godly. And it's like, uh... Yeah, th- this is definitely going to get intense. Uh, you best believe we did the first three parts. We're going to do the finale the week after because we want to give you got everybody time to watch it. Because, you know, not everybody can watch it live. Yeah, and and of course, because I'm doing part four, we're going to do part five. Yep. And then, and then on Friday, Harley Quinn. Nice. And that's my schedule. Uh, no, it's not always, like, really DC heavy, but lately with the CW stuff, it has been but i for the record i do like marvel yep uh it's just marvel hasn't you know come out with tv shows since you know marvel tv's been canned yeah but we are getting the Disney and the Plus hulu stuff, stuff which uh which is happening soon which by the way um i don't know if i ever told you this off camera but disney slightly offhandedly basically announced that WandaVision was coming out in 2020. It's in 2020? On the on the original slate, it was 2021. Exactly. Oh, shit. They've moved it oh, up. Oh, shit. But, um, also, this kind of dates it, but as of recording right now, there's a rumor going around saying that the Hawkeye show is on indefinite hiatus. Oh man! But how do start from? But also Jeremy Renner, who's kind of been a bit of hot I water. Mean, yeah, now. true. But anyway, enough of that. That's my plugging and my schedule. Okay, now. so oh, let me take a deep breath so I don't cough through this schedule. <gasps> okay. So, in terms of TV stuff, I've got going on uh, similar to Brian. I've got Crisis and then and Harley Quinn. But I also have on Fridays, and uh, you guys over on Vlair seem to like it. Um, uh, I started reviewing uh, a animated series that started, uh, you know, this past week or this uh, like Friday, a couple days ago, as of recording this, The Owl House, which is uh, created by a. Uh, storyboarder from gravity falls so it has like this gravity falls vibe it's this weird fantasy setting episode two is going to involve a magical school so you say the words magical school and uh to quote rick and morty you son of a bitch i'm in yeah we we even just as a little funny side note in our group chat about tv and all that we were talking about a new show that's coming up about Dracula's Brides. And Jay was like, eh. But then he read a particular line in the plot. Yep, magical Magical School. And he's like, ah, oh, shit. I'm gonna have to <laughs> yep. watch it. So, you know, the Owl House is super fun. Love the art style. It's super fucking weird. Um, and it's fantasy. And like real fantasy, it, and it's weird in like the same kind of Gravity Falls way. And if you guys don't know, Gravity Falls is one of my favorite animated shows of the last decade. So, <laughs> like, I when I saw these commercials, I was like, oh, I gotta watch it. And then I watched the first episode, just like, oh, I'm covering it, I'm covering it. I love this. Honestly, Brian, like this is a show you would eat up. I think so, because what I, I 
I never got a chance to finish it because just life got in the way. But from what I saw, I loved Gravity Falls and all its weirdness. Like, down to the fact of the dwarf named Gravity Honestly, Locke. dude, like, uh, you know, uh, I, I'll, I'll tell you more off camera. But, like, seriously, though, you might want to consider it. Because, like, it, it comes out on Fridays, but at fr- on Friday nights, it's a 9 o'clock show. Because it's more, like, not adult-oriented, but there's a lot more, like, mature humor in it. So it comes on at 9 on Fridays. Oh, okay, so cool. It might be available for you. So, something to consider. Um, but yeah, uh, I'm doing that on Fridays as well. Um, the anime is coming back. Uh, I, I, you know, loved covering anime on YouTube. But one of the things that I hated about doing anime on YouTube is that I had to really censor myself. Because, uh, and censor my thumbnails. But now I don't have to do either. So, I'm going full ham. Uh, uh, in terms of anime that I'm covering for this winter season, I am covering, um, of course, the rest of My Hero Academia Season 4, which, man, this episode was fucking awesome. My Hero Academia was trending on Twitter today because of that episode. Uh, it was pretty fucking epic. Um, and, of course, I'm also covering Nekopara, uh, the um, official anime that just started, which, uh, that's one of my favorite, uh, visual, visual novel games. Uh, me and my friend, uh, me and our boy Tony are super into that one. It's a lot of fun. Um, and speaking of another one that's real fun that, like, I definitely could not cover on YouTube is, uh, Interspecies Reviewers. Um, I'm doing that anime as well. And, uh, just to give you guys a little, 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 like, nugget of information. Simple premise. It's a anime about an adventurer and his elf companion, but uh, they don't just do regular adventuring. You know what they do? Um, they actually go around to different species-specific brothels and uh, review the product. Yeah, they write reviews on brothels. It, it's really hilarious and weird, and honestly, it's almost borderline hentai, but I'm not going to lie, I kind of dig it. Um, and, uh, last but certainly not least, probably the most anticipated anime of the winter season, for me at least, is season three of A Certain Scientific Railgun. Oh my god, I absolutely love the Railgun series. Uh, it has been a couple years since season two. I actually just recently re-binged seasons one and two and did a video on that. Uh, in preparation for season three, and actually, as we're recording this video, I was upload <coughs> I was uploading uh, the season three uh, episode one review. So by the time you're hearing this, that video should be up. Uh, so um, those are mostly going to be on the weekends. I know My Hero Academia and Interspecies Reviewers comes out on Saturdays, um, and I believe Railgun comes out on Fridays. Uh, so. The anime stuff is mostly on the weekends, uh, which works out perfectly for me. Um, other stuff on the weekends that I'm covering, of course, Doctor Who. And I am covering the USA uh, drama Dare Me, which is pretty freaking intense, man. Like, I still don't know what the big mystery is or, like, what happened, what the big crime is. Like, what is the big little lives level? Like, what the fuck did you do? But, man, this show is so good at building things up. Like, this reveal, I, I just need to know. I really need to fucking know. Um, I honestly, like, if you are into, like, the suspense type, uh, mystery type of thing, you will definitely like Dare Me. I uh, really enjoy that one. And, of course, last but certainly not least, um, what we are covering next on Channel Chasers, uh, hopefully we hit all the right notes with this episode, because we are covering... High School Musical, The Musical, The Series, Season 1. And thankfully, it was already renewed for a Season 2 before the show even started, so, like, we don't have to worry about that. So, you know, no more Rise problems. And we're going to talk about Rise when we talk about High School Musical, The Musical, The Series, because it's just inevitable. Um, But that's going to be a lot of fun. Um, As always, you guys, uh, thank you for listening or watching. And if you want to submit feedback and tell us your thoughts on these different shows, you know, that we talk about, uh, you can email us at Channel Chasers Podcast um, um, at gmail.com or on Channel Chasers Podcast at gmail.com. 
That is the email address where you can send your feedback. You can also leave us reviews, you know, hopefully five stars. Some more people can find us on iTunes and on the other platforms. That would be greatly <coughs> appreciated. Uh, thank you a lot. Um, and um, I apologize for my, like, occasional coughing. Uh, this cold is super stubborn. Most of the symptoms are gone, but this cough just wants to stay, apparently. Uh, but uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this Doctor Who episode, and I really hope you enjoy our High School Musical episode, because a lot of feels will be yep. had. Um, but until next time... And uh, just, oh, yeah, go ahead, Brian. just like Doctor Who, it's, I was just going to say, just like Doctor Who itself, we're taking a break from the super serial... Uh, but once we're done with our break, it's back into the serious stuff with Crisis. Yep. We got a, a very nice slate planned for you guys, and I'm super excited. This whole podcast thing has been really fun. And I mean, like, it's not really much different from the like the, the YouTube versions that we used to do. But like, again, it's a new venture, and we really appreciate all the support it's been getting. So uh, again, thanks a lot. We really appreciate it. Thank you. And until next time. We'll catch you guys later. Uh, same channel, Chaser's time. Same channel, Chaser's channel. Peace.